English cream golden retrievers might be the most controversial style of golden retriever. There are lots of rumors about them, like that they're healthier, calmer, and more valuable than other goldens. But are any of these rumors true? Well, some are, and others are false. But first, we'll start with one of the biggest misunderstandings about these dogs. What is an English cream golden retriever in the first place? Some people think that English cream goldens are a different breed of golden retriever because they have cream-colored coats, stocky bodies, and blocky heads. They may look a little different than some darker-colored, slimmer goldens, but they're not actually a different breed. There's only one breed of golden retriever, and within that breed, there are different styles, such as English cream and field-bred golden retrievers. These styles came about from breeders in different locations breeding dogs for different purposes. Think about it this way. If you're in America breeding golden retrievers to hunt ducks, the qualities that you want in a dog are totally different than if you were in England breeding golden retrievers to impress judges in the show ring. And these differences have been even more exaggerated because there's a big pond between the two countries. It used to be much harder to shuttle dogs between England and America, so of course some differences started to evolve. And speaking of the show ring, here's a weird fact that makes these differences even more pronounced. The UK and American Kennel Clubs have different breed standards for golden retrievers. When it comes to color, the AKC says predominant body color, which is either extremely pale or extremely dark, is undesirable. But the breed standard for the kennel club in the UK says any shade of gold or cream, neither red nor mahogany. So the Americans don't like the cream colored goldens in the show ring, but in the UK, they're more accepting of it. There's also a difference in size. The AKC says male goldens should be 23 to 24 inches tall and females should be 21 and a half to 22 and a half inches tall. While the Kennel Club in the UK says male goldens should be 22 to 24 inches tall and females should be 20 to 22 inches tall. So there's another slight difference there with the UK accepting shorter goldens. But here is where it gets extra spicy. The Golden Retriever Club of America is definitely not a fan of the term English Cream Golden Retriever. On their website, they say that these light dogs are sometimes being presented to the general public as being exceptionally rare or extremely valuable. And they say that they are frequently being touted as being healthier, of having better temperament, of having stronger longevity. Due to these common marketing ploys, the average puppy buyer sometimes mistake such light-colored golden retrievers for being a separate breed. Nothing could be further from the truth. Shots fired. And there's a lot to unpack here. We already talked about color and how in America, the AKC doesn't like cream-colored goldens. So there might actually be a valid argument for why they would be rare in America. But let's look at some numbers. We did a study where we asked 600 golden retriever owners, mostly in America, what color their golden is. Gold, light gold slash cream, or red. We found out that red is actually the least common color of golden retriever. Or, if we wanted to push the golden retriever club of America's buttons, we can call them the most rare color of golden retriever. Only 16.8% of golden retriever owners had a red golden in our study. 51% of golden retriever owners had a gold golden retriever, while 31% of golden owners had a light gold or cream colored golden retriever. So I agree with the Golden Retriever Club of America here. English cream golden retrievers aren't exactly rare. And let's talk about price. I've often noticed English cream golden retrievers are more expensive. Yes, it could totally be a marketing ploy because the breeder wants you to think they're rare. But it could also be because the breeder is really good. Maybe they only have a few litters per year and spend lots of time raising, training, and socializing the puppies before they go home with you. It could also be because they live in an expensive area where everything has a higher price tag. When you go to a breeder, you'll need to do some investigating for yourself to figure out why the puppies are priced the way they are. If you think the puppies are priced high because of marketing hype or color, then definitely run. But if they're expensive because the breeder is really good and works hard to produce the best puppies possible and improve the breed, then that's a good sign. And on the flip side, puppies that are cheap are a red flag too. If a breeder isn't taking good care of the mama and the puppies and isn't doing their research on the parents' health and temperaments before breeding them, then you could end up with an unhealthy dog or a dog with personality traits you'd rather not have. Sure, 
You may save money up front, but there's a good chance you could spend even more money with your vet later. The next issue the Golden Retriever Club of America has with English creams is that people claim they have a better temperament. I don't have any studies to prove or refute this, but there's one big factor that will determine their temperament, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But first, we'll talk about the most important claim about English cream golden retrievers that you need to know about, and then we'll talk about the weirdest myth about these dogs. So many people claim that they're healthier than other golden retrievers. According to a study from the University of Cambridge in the UK, 38.8% of golden retrievers will die from cancer. But according to the Morris Animal Foundation, which is located in America, 60% of golden retrievers are impacted by cancer. So what's the difference? Are goldens in the UK actually less likely to get cancer? Was there an error or maybe just random chance that led to the differences in these studies? There's also the wording of this data. The study at Cambridge particularly noted death rates for golden retrievers, while the Morris Animal Foundation says that 60% of golden retrievers are, quote, impacted by cancer. So maybe less than 60% of goldens actually die from cancer? Either way, it sounds like there may be a possibility that goldens from the UK are healthier than goldens in America. I'll link our blog post about English cream golden retrievers down in the description, where you can see the sources for everything that we're talking about here. But if you're planning on getting an English cream golden retriever because of their health based on these two studies alone, then there's a major flaw in your plan. And that is the fact that most English cream golden retrievers that you see in America aren't actually from England. Yep, just like French fries aren't actually from France. All golden retrievers originated in Scotland back in the mid-1800s, but many English cream golden retriever breeders in America import their dogs from countries like Denmark, France, Hungary, other European countries, and even Australia. So if they're not actually from England, then how did they get their name? The Kennel Club and the Golden Retriever Club in the UK were the first ones to write up the breed standard. And in the early 1900s, all dog shows in Britain were held in England. So in America, we call the champions of those dog shows English champions. The name English seems to have stuck with Goldens that look like the English champions back in those days, so 100 years later, we're still calling them English Cream Golden Retrievers. But all of the drama really comes down to this. What are the breeders focused on? When evaluating a Golden Retriever breeder, you want to choose a breeder that prioritizes health and temperament above everything else. Yes, including color. If a breeder breeds healthy dogs with great temperaments, then you're likely to get a healthy dog with a great temperament. And if the breeder is taking great care of the puppies before they go home with you and socializing and training them, then your chances of having a great dog go up even higher. No matter the color or the country that the dog is from, the parents and the breeder are the most important things you need to pay attention to. The problem is when a breeder puts too much focus on color, looks, or how rare their dogs are. That's when the little alarm bells should go off in your head and you need to go find a new breeder. When those red flags are priorities over health, temperament, and taking good care of the puppies and the mama, that's how you end up with an unhealthy dog or one with a not-so-great personality. And if you want to learn more about how English and American Golden Retrievers compare, check out English vs. American Golden Retrievers next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.